Okay, so we are going to set up what we call a cloud chamber. To do that, I have uh, some rubbing alcohol. I have a plastic box. I have a tray, which I'm gonna put some dry ice into. I have a, a metal plate. And last but not least, I have some dry ice, which is, as you know, carbon dioxide. So we're gonna break this up into smaller pieces. Why are you doing that, David? Well, I wanna have, I wanna fill this tray with dry ice and I need them small enough, I need the pieces small enough to make good contact with the metal plate. Oh, okay. So, ooh, this is the fun part. Actually, I'm gonna do this in a couple of batches, maybe. And you're wearing gloves because? Because this is really cold and I don't wanna freeze my fingers. All right, that's pretty good for the first part. Put that in the tray. Now let's add a little more to that. Where do you get dry ice, Bill? Well, I know you out in the public, you can get it at grocery stores a lot of times and they actually have some places that um, refill like co2 containers that have some dry ice sometimes but here at purdue we have stores on campus that we're able to get it from what do people use it for uh to keep things cold david i mean so if you want to get things cold and keep it cold it's a great way to do it especially when you're doing research on things that you want to slow down or Keep it a girly cold temperature. Okay, that's pretty good. I see the smaller the pieces are, the better contact I'll have on my metal plate. Okay, now let's take the plastic box. take the gloves off right now and inside the plastic box we have some felt strips and I'm just going to saturate these strips with some rubbing alcohol here let me show you how I do this so you're just squirting it in there I'm just squirting it on there make your video, well, you can fast forward through this part. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. So we're gonna create an atmosphere inside the box of alcohol vapor. So the alcohol on these strips will evaporate. and fill the box with alcohol vapor. Okay, I think that should be pretty good. That feels wet. Okay, now I'm going to set the metal plate on the dry ice, that will get really cold. I'll put the box on top and let the alcohol evaporate. So how long are we gonna let this sit here for? We will let this sit here for about 10 minutes. Okay. And then we will look to see 
if we see anything inside. Awesome. I'm recording. Here, let me get out of the way. Okay, so we are looking for what looks like vapor trails. So we have at the very bottom layer, an alcohol vapor, which is saturated, meaning if it's disturbed by an ionizing particle, it will form a vapor trail. Ooh, there was one right there. Did you get that? I don't think so. Ooh, there's another one. I think you might want to raise your camera slightly. So the ionizing particle alpha particle, beta particle, causes the vapor to condense into a vapor trail. I think we just saw a couple right there. Now you might say, where are those ionizing particles coming from? Well, there's one there. Yep. And this is an example of background radiation. There was a big one. Whoa, there's a couple good ones. And the background radiation is coming from Typically, cement blocks, concrete, building materials that come from the earth, like cement, and from outer space. That was a huge one. So we have the orange thing is just a piece of pottery. It, it has a uh, radioactive glaze on it, which is the orange color. So these things are shooting left and right. I mean, they're just shooting everywhere. So the, uh, the fabric is, here, let me change my light. Yeah, look at there. There we go. Well, we all have all kinds of activity. The fabric is from a, uh, a kerosene lantern. It's the part that glows. And it has, uh, in its, the material from which it's made contains thorium, a radioactive element. So that's that one. What's this nut over here? That's a Brazil nut. And Brazil nuts are also radioactive, although not a lot. And they get that from the root system going of the tree going down really far mm -hmm. in the ground? Yes. And is that also the, uh, a lot of houses have systems in their basement to get rid of radon? Yes. Uh, I don't think it's radon in the Brazil nut. Okay. But a similar thing that's a, down. A similar, mm -hmm, yeah, a radioactive element. And then this orange piece is a piece of pottery? That is a piece of pottery. They used to make uh, plates out of them. Yeah. Fiesta ware? Yeah, it's called Fiesta ware. It's kind of weird to think that uh, so Fiesta Ware is illegal in this country, in the U.S. 
and you can see the particles shooting off of it. But it's interesting to think that uh, people used to eat their dinner off of radioactive plates. Can you move the light back to the... Yeah, the mantle. The mantle's got a lot of, a lot of activity coming off of it. Yes, it does. So we, we don't know if these are alpha, beta, or gamma particles, right? We might have a little bit of a clue by the trajectory, the path, and the width of the path. So an alpha particle is a much bigger particle than a, a beta particle, and so it has a larger path. So when we did this earlier and we and we didn't have anything in there and we were seeing background radiation, it's it's either an alpha, beta, or gamma particle that's shooting through there. The background radiation is mostly particles that behave like beta particles. They're actually muons from outer space. <coughs> Excuse me. And a muon is like a big electron. and they're bombarding us all, all, the all the time. All the time, yeah. That's fantastic. This is really amazing to see these coming off. So you notice some are uh, fat and puffy, some are wider and, and more and broader and more puffy looking. Others are more, uh, are, are a finer, trail. Some appear to be faster, some appear to be slower. You ready? Ready. All right, Bill, I thought it might be fun to actually take a, a Geiger counter, which is the same kind of detector in the, uh, in the nuclear scalar. And let's take a look at the samples that we just looked at. So for example, uh, let's set this to, uh, so we can hear it. So I know that's upside down, but I have a count of about, 0.98. So every time I'm hearing one of those little clicks, what's that mean? It means that a an ionizing particle hits the GM tube or the the detector. Okay. So that's a good amount with that one. Yeah, that's that's pretty radioactive. Let's, now, uh, let's try the Brazil nut. In fact, I can hold it in my hand. Well, and, and when you had it where it was before, that kind of goes back to what we just saw. There wasn't a lot of coming off of that, but there was some. But the mantle had a ton. Yeah, let's check out the mantle. Yeah, let's see what that one looks like. Yeah, that definitely has a lot more clicks. So you hear it and you see the little red light flash. And every click is a, uh, is a decay where a particle is emitted. It could be an alpha, beta, or gamma. We don't know, but if we know the composition of the material, uh, we can do a little research and find out what kind of a decay it, it, it exhibits. Let's go back and look at the uh, Fiesta wear again. Well, the Fiesta wear and the lantern 
fabric are both pretty radioactive. We can tell that just by the number of audible clicks. <laughs> 